I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Go ahead and call the uh, two-thirds council meeting in order. Uh, you will call, please, Rick. Councilman Nichols? Here. 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 Uh, moving on. Uh, consent agenda. Make a motion to approve. Second. Uh, I have a motion by Councilman Nichols and a second by uh, Councilman James to approve the consent agenda as presented. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Uh, agenda. So moved. Second. I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented by Councilman James, seconded by uh, Councilman Jackson. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, moving on to three, three A presentations. Uh, M Municipal Judge Jake Kramer will administer the oath of office uh, to Derek Duran as mayor and Randy Looper as a new member of Craig City Council. Hey, that's you. Repeat <laughs> yep. after me. I, Derek Duran. I, Derek Duran. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Or affirm. Or affirm. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. And the Craig City Charter. And the Craig City Charter. And municipal ordinances. And municipal ordinances. And that I will faithfully perform. And that I will faithfully faithfully perform the duties of the office. The duties of the office. Of mayor for the city of Craig, Colorado. Of mayor of the city of Craig, Colorado. Upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations. Thank you. Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I, Randy Looper. I, Randy Looper. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. And the Craig City Charter. And the Craig City Charter. And municipal ordinances. And municipal ordinances. And that I will faithfully perform and I will faithfully perform the duties of the office, the duties of the office of council member for the city of Craig, Colorado, of council member for the city of Craig, Colorado, upon which I'm about to enter, upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations, council. <laughs> All right, next up, 3B, uh, Police Chief Michael Cochran will administrator the oath of office to Jarrett Johnson and Sambu Sritha as the newest members of the Craig Police Department. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. All right, Jared Johnson. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. And the Craig City Charter and Municipal Ordinances. And the Craig City Charter and Municipal Ordinances. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully perform my duties. And that I will well and faithfully perform my duties. 
as a Craig police officer. As a Craig police officer. Congratulations. Thank you. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your name. I, Sam Busharesta. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. And the Craig City Charter. And the Craig City Charter. And municipal ordinances. And municipal ordinances. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any, ment without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully perform. And that I will well and faithfully perform. My duties as a Craig police officer. My duties as a Craig police officer. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Staffing chief, that's it. Full staff, full staffing. That oath's oh, pretty hard when you're on the spot, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Got a room full of people. Thanks, chief. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. to the two new members. Uh, 3C Police Chief Michael Cochran will present life saving awards to police officers Nate Baker, Wacy Labs, and Trace Mendoza for their life saving efforts performed on April 4th, 2023. Thank you, Mayor and Council. These three officers um, responded on a call and wound up performing CPR using the AED and never said a word about it. We had no idea it had happened until sometime later there was an article in the Craig Daily Press. And the gentleman that was the patient at that time uh, wrote the letter expressing his gratitude so for that and prior to doing that i'm going to ask commander conrad to come up and read the article that was in the paper uh, letters to the editor may 11 2023 uh, i'm writing today to thank the Craig police department for helping save my life with cpr on april 8 after my shift at city market as a night grocery stalker, I went home and had a massive heart attack and a hemorrhaging stroke. My roommate used CPR to bring me back once, and then Craig police were in the trailer park on a call, so officers were able to render CPR another eight times to get me into the ambulance. I coded six times in the ambulance at Memorial Regional Health. I was life flown by air ambulance helicopter to Valley View Hospital, and I coded many more times on the flight. I coded 11 more times while in surgery. I was driven by land ambulance to Swedish Medical Center in Inglewood and was diagnosed with a stroke and four week brain bleed. After eight weeks in recovery, I am at the Encompass Rehab Hospital in Littleton. Maybe another week and I can go back home to Craig. This would not have been possible without the officers that rendered CPR to save my life. Eight times in the beginning of my journey and my roommate who gave me CPR until the police could arrive. Heroes walk among us, and they are not comic book characters. A Dean A. Navajo healer saved my life and reversed my medical conditions. I am surviving my hemorrh hemorrhagic stroke. All the doctors could just watch. Call it miraculous healing. I am grateful for Craig Police, EMS, Memorial Regional Health, Life Flight Medical Helicopter, Valley View Hospital, Swedish Medical Center, and Compass Rehab Hospital over eight weeks, almost home again, 
It all started with my roommate giving me CPR until the Craig Police Department arrived to take over. CPR saved me. Chris McRaney, Craig. So again, Council, we had no idea that the officers had responded on that call. Um, when we read the article in the paper, we had to do some digging to find out who the officers were and very proud of those officers. So I want to present them with the Life Saving Award and I'm going to read you the bottom portion. For outstanding police performance in the saving of a human life, the most precious of our duties. Your display of conspicuous initiative, capability, and attention to duty has proven to be unmeasurable. The act you performed on April the 4th, 2023, shows your selfless dedication to the citizens of Craig and your department. Awarded this 13th day of June, 2023. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Chief. <clears throat> All right. Presentations 3D. Uh, Mark Ashby, representing CDOT, would like to recognize Doug Conrad for his years of service as a DRE drug recognition expert. Hello, Mark. All right. Good evening, Mayor, Council. My name is Mark Ashby. I am the Colorado DRE Drug Recognition Expert State Coordinator, and I run a program of probably about 1,500 people, both that are all the DUI instructors and then the drug recognition experts in Colorado. And somebody that I'm lucky enough to call my friend and coworker, uh, Doug Conrad, was in my program for over 15 years as a drug recognition expert. Then he ran the program for the Colorado State Patrol. He would supervise 60 to 70 different people while at the State Patrol running this really tough program. So on behalf of the Highway Safety Office at the Colorado Department of Transportation, I'd like just to bring this to your attention that you have a superhero amongst your staff, obviously, with the three that just got awarded their medals. So um, I just want to bring that to your attention. And because of his hard work and the coordination that we have, we're going to extend to the city of Craig and this county at least one, if not two, drug recognition officer seats at the upcoming school that we present next year. If we can pull it off, you guys are welcome to have those seats. And that is something that this community really desperately needs. So on behalf of that, I just want to say thank you to Commander Conrad. I slipped up today in class and called him Doug a number of times. But we have a high level class going on right now because of the efforts that Commander Conrad brought to this community. So I have a, a small token of appreciation here in this plaque. And um, I brought you a coffee cup. So I've got that for you as well. So thank you, sir, so much. Thank you. You're amazing. And Appreciate I'm so glad it. to know you. All right. Thank Excellent. you, sir. Thank you. Excellent. All right. <laughs> Chief, that's that's a, a great night for your for your staff and your department, and you know, getting fully staffed and having these awards and and everything. That's just a testament to your leadership and and your great staff. So thank you guys. Thank you, sir. That's great. All right, moving on. Uh, item four, city manager report. Peter. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening again, Council. Just a few things real quick. Uh, water rights re review is nearly complete, and uh, I gotta tell you, the Wilson Water Group is doing a fantastic job of assembling our water rights and ensuring that uh, we have a, uh, a process for preventing future uh, loss of water rights that are uh, abandoned by various departments at the state, potentially, uh, for lack of uh, beneficial use or uh, anyway so we have we have those processes uh, developed uh, they're being adopted uh, by the water department uh, in terms of how we record and use water at each of our four diversions 
our water rights are somewhat complex in that we have storage rights from two different sources at, at Elkhead, and we have four different diversions that we have to uh, monitor and, and uh, continue to show accounting uh, for use of each of those diversions. Uh, fortification is probably one of the, one of the least uh, utilized in the past in terms of accounting, but uh, in order to retain that water right, we have to continue to show that we are utilizing that water uh, for the city, and uh, it comes with a, a few caveats. There's an old ditch there, the Craig Ditch, that we have 1.33 CFS, and then the uh, fortification water right is 7 CFS, and you can only use uh, the fortification water right uh, as municipal as a municipal water source as long as you have water that's a measurable uh, amount of water coming past the uh, the Craig Ditch, which is located up around 13th and uh, and Fortification Creek, so. It's kind of kind of interesting all the little caveats that you get into with uh, <laughs> with those uh, water rights and and how we go about uh, uh, converting uh, some very valuable rights that we currently have that are conditional out at Elkhead Reservoir and uh, eventually we want those rights converted to absolute rights because they have a lot of they have a lot more decreed uses than the current absolute rights that we have in the in the reservoir that are stored there today. And that's a that's a process that we can go into at some other uh, point if you have any questions about that. But anyway, uh, we're near the completion of that piece, and uh, we'll close out the uh, the water rights plan here uh, probably in the next few weeks. And uh, we still have yet to, uh, to put together the conservation plan uh, when you have uh, you know uh, extremely dry situations, so we can mitigate. Um, the use of water in a situation, in a drought situation, especially multiple years, if that should occur. Uh, this is not one of those years, and, and because of all that water, we have lots of weeds in town, and that's, uh, that's a, <laughs> that is a, another uh, item that we're attacking right now through several departments, and uh, you, should, you should start to see a better uh, maintenance and mitigation of the weeds, especially in uh, public uh, areas, trails, and um, some of the high throughput traffic areas in town. But uh, they're coming on strong, and uh, actually they're kind of ahead of us at this point. Uh, we still have a few hires to make uh, in terms of some of our seasonal support uh, to help us stay on top of that. Uh, I attended the uh, JOLT uh, meeting that uh, was... Uh, I didn't bring the brochure. That's the joint, uh, anybody have that? Organizations Leading Transitions. Thank you, okay. <laughs> Chris was there. And anyway, anyway, it was an excellent meeting. They had some great speakers, including the former uh, Secretary of the Interior under President Trump for two years. And uh, he had some really uh, uh, astute observations about uh, energy use and, and how public lands are are made available uh, for that purpose or not, which is uh, somewhat the case at this point in time. We had a lot of uh, discussion, nuclear discussion, um, <clears throat> from uh, speakers like Christine King. Uh, she heads up the, uh, the GAIN program, the Gateway for Accelerated Innovation uh, in Nuclear, and uh, uh, she's... Uh, She's up at Idaho National Labs, and they're coming up with some, some great technologies, and she hopes to uh, support our efforts for a future transition of the uh, Craig Station, whether that be uh, gas, nuclear, or some other form of energy, but uh, she'd, uh, certainly her focus is nuclear. And she had, she had a, some very inter interesting comments, and I'm sure Chris or one of the, uh, Randy attended as well, so I'm sure you'll have some other comments on that. I uh, plan to take a, a few days off, um, all, most of next week. I'll be here Monday. I'm going to take some vacation time uh, just before we get into the budget session. And uh, so I, um, uh, Melanie, of course, will be uh, able to contact me. You, you have my cell phone. You can call me. I'll, I'll be uh, available on the beach. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to say where I'm at, really. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I hope it's uh, I hope it's uh, comfortable and uh, relaxing. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. Um, any questions on the pr report that I previously forwarded to you, um, or any other item in the city that you'd like to discuss? <clears throat> Peter, did we? You mentioned weeds, and one of my favorite discussions every year, I think. But uh, mm. we have some frequent flyers or frequent offenders. Are we making any progress with some more teeth somewhere in our ordinance? So. We don't fight this battle every single year with the same people. I'm not sure that we are making progress at this point. We have made some uh, progress in terms of how we uh, prosecute those things. And uh, But uh, I'll let uh, Heather or Mike uh, talk about. Sure. So what um, I think there's been two areas of focus for you in the past um well we're talking about some apartment complexes that are always uh are we talking about the dogs or are we talking about the weeds or the dog mess weeds the weeds yeah so we actually had a meeting about that this morning oh. um and chief cochran uh indicated that several administrative citations have been issued um which if we're going to abate the property we have to issue those citations first um, apparently, however, um, they, a lot of them have been remedied without having to write them into municipal court. Um, you know, because we've had such a wet year, I think the weeds are going to be difficult to control all around. Um, but I think, t was it today that you all were interviewing for the seasonal? Tomorrow. Tomorrow they're interviewing for some seasonal CSO positions, which will um, really take some relief or some heat off of um, the full-time CSOs that we have um, because I think it's, you know, as you experienced last year, call to call and then trying to stay on top of the weeds and, and other issues is just um, pretty You know, hard. understood the weeds this year are, are rapidly growing, but my, my question was the frequent, frequently every year the same people are, you know, are being cited over and over again. Somehow we need something, something that's a little bit more attention getting. Let's put it that way. Sure. The problem, part of the problem is, is that um, some of the frequent flyers are out of, tone, out of town property owners that we were not able to locate last year. And so even though they had been issued citations um, by Philip at the time, we weren't even able to locate them to serve them. Um, and so you know, there's quite a few out of town property owners that just don't um, care if there are liens against their property. So, you know, we're doing the best we can with the laws that we have. I don't know that there would be any changes necessarily that we could make that would give us more teeth. Um, I think it's just kind of navigating each individual property for the specific owner and the circumstance. Okay. Well. I have a question. On property that's up for sale and it's empty, the house is empty, is the listing realtor responsible for that? No. And so they can just grow up to my knees? Yep. Yeah, the listing agent doesn't have any ownership interest in the property, so there, there's no way to, even if you wanted to, there would be no way to attempt to hold them accountable for that. But the city could contact that realtor and she could pass that sure message on mm -hmm. thank you <clears throat> thanks anything else for for peter all right thanks peter all right moving on to uh council reports uh we'll start with you councilman nichols <laughs> well paul i'll have to apologize to you here uh, we still have the standing been, rule even it, though you we know it's been uh, it. three and <laughs> almost three, three weeks minutes. since uh last meeting and it's been quite busy so you might be able to change it with a vote you might have now that it's different but we still have a standing three minute rule for council reports. well clock me will you um <laughs> okay uh well first of all i'll start out with uh with shannon and peter we attended the uh brownfield redevelopment outreach meeting at the center of craig uh there were some outstanding present presentations of redevelopment of some areas around the community um, some ideas that uh, maybe some developers could take to heart. 
The only problem is we still have some same property owners that are not willing to do anything with their property, and pretty soon it's going to be a hazard. So, you know, we wish somebody would actually look at some of those properties and take some of those concepts and move forward because they presented quite a few. Uh, worked the Grand Old West days the, after the carnival and the uh, rodeo at the beer garden. Uh, the carnival was very well attended, but the um, concert was a little, little short, so we, we participated with that. Peter and I attended the uh, Colorado Municipal League Spring Outreach in um, Hayden. Uh, it was great to hear there was Hayden, Oak Creek, Craig, Steamboat Springs was that in attendance. Uh, CML gave a legislative update, talked about House Bill 213 a lot, uh, which was the taking away local control from our our um, zoning laws and redevelopment standards. Um, very good. I encourage all council to attend these when they're available because they come to our area locally. In September, Craig is hosting uh, this outreach. We'll be in Craig. City of Steamboat Springs has volunteered to help co-present it with us. So you, Peter already sent out one email on it for ideas. So we'll be moving forward with that. Uh, attended the Yampa Valley Regional Airport Expansion Open House. Um, it's a three-phase development, which is 100, all three phases, about $128 million for the expansion of that airport. Um, steamboat, the whole valley is growing, um, out putting demand on the facilities. That's why they're actually looking at how to, how to handle that growth. So. There'll be more to come on that. Uh, these are only conceptual drawings. They haven't worked out the financing yet. Attended JOLT with Peter. Uh, it's the Northwest Colorado Energy Summit. What, what was interesting about it, it was all forms of energy. They presented uh, solar, wind, uh, nuclear, geothermal, uh, future uses of coal, you know, carbon fiber, uh, rare earth minerals, talked about all all these different uh, uh, subjects. They had a meteorologi meteorologi yeah, meteorologist, yeah, you know, uh, he came and talked, I, I can't remember his name, talked a little bit and presented the other side of climate change, fact versus, what was the name of his presentation, um, fact versus, you know, perception. And you can be a climate denier or not, but he preside, pre presented the other side of the issue. Um, Parrotheads group in town, a nonprofit, does, it's a service club. Uh, they delivered 175 flower pots around the community, helped with that. Uh, not only does it help some beautification to the community, but also um, they were all pu purchased local, locally out at uh, Lazy Days, uh, greenhouses out west of town, and that money's used for scholarships for local youth. Uh, did the food truck carnival downtown, attended the um, concert afterwards, uh, also participated in the Craig Luau, the Craig World Fire Protection District Luau. They use money every year for scholarships that they make at that Luau. Uh, I presented or talked at the Water Education Colorado. It's a statewide mission to help Coloradans understand water and make informed decisions. This year they did a tour of the Yampa, White, and Green River basins. Uh, they went through Craig, they spent the night here, had dinner at the brewery. Uh, they you know, did a good job. I spoke a little bit about what Craig is doing for the transition, how we're trying to prepare ourselves. Um, Colorado Space Business Roundtable. Uh, I guess I'm on the board. Somehow I got elected to this. Um, to identify potential suppliers for aerospace companies, bringing aerospace reps to rural Colorado. Um, what they're going to do in July 26, they're going to be touring the community. Uh, they're going to have a tour of Trapper uh, Mine, the power plant facilities. Reason for the tour is there's work trying to repurpose uh, those facilities, those buildings. Sorry, Paul, get over it. <laughs> um, 
Uh, so that's a group working on aerospace. You know, it's something like when we heard about the Space Force, if you remember that, uh, we all kind of thought that was kind of silly at first. But aerospace in northwest Colorado. We're going to be doing a tour of the airport. The airport is vital for economic development for all, all industries and developing new industries as well. Attended the orientation to be a judge for the Craig's Business Plan Contest. Um, they already had a kickoff meeting on that. Information's on the new uh, economic development website. There's going to be $15,000 in round one award for a business plan. If you present a business plan and you win round one, uh, there's another round. Is it 15000 as well? Um, just for doing your presentation and hopefully that the incentive money to get your business actually started. So these are our startup entrepreneurs. So round one is due August 15th, your deadline for your business plan. Um, upcoming, I have the CML conference uh, starting the 27th. I will miss that 27 co council meeting because I'll be in Denver at the CML conference. Mr. Mayor. Other than that, I'm done. Five minutes? <laughs> Seven? <laughs> Had you for Tom, Tom will make me look good. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Heiser? Yes, I do have a little something. Um, <clears throat> I also attended the Brownsfield uh, meeting at the center of Craig. Uh, I went to the very first one, and so I was interested in any updates. Uh, I can say I don't love everything about Alice Pleasant Park, but I have at least another year before I need to step up too much. Uh, I liked the uh, concept of developing, I'm going to say the 300 block mm -hmm. of Yampa. Mm -hmm. It said 400 block on there, but it's, it, that's impossible. It can't be the 400 block, unless we tear the firehouse down. I don't think we're going to do that. So, but I think that was a great idea, and I've talked to uh, Ryan Hess, I think, before he even became mayor about doing that, and I thought it was a, a great idea, and I love the, the whole concept of it. And I also, I attended the uh, Jolt Mixer at the chamber, but I had a prior commitment, so I wasn't able to attend the meeting uh, the next day. But I did meet some interesting people at that, and that was it. I did something else, but I don't know, probably just looking for trouble. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Jackson. All right. uh, I didn't really have much. Graduation three weeks ago kept me kind of busy, but uh, just wanted to remind everyone of all the groups, clubs, organizations, and businesses that support our graduates with many scholarships. Um, we have great community. All these uh, groups, they just offer up their time and money to support locally. And just wanted to give thanks and remind everyone to give their support and appreciation. And that's all I got. Councilman Looper. Um, I also attended the Jolt Conference and really enjoyed the diversity and the, the difference of opinions and ideas. Really liked the, um, the information update on the Trans West high energy lines and where that's coming from. Um, I also attended the Brownfield orientation, um, information session, and agree with Vicki. I like the, what they're thinking, and I'm not sure if it's the 300 or 400 block, but at the end, um, 300. Um, attended the LMD, and we have um, terminated our agreement with Datafy, which has provided us information on um, who's attending and where they're coming from for events and tourism and, and other economic development. We just felt that for the cost, it wasn't worth to continue with what they are providing us. Um, so we did that, um, attended the chamber, of which uh, the LMD had awarded the chamber $40,000 for the mural. So I've been in contact with the artist, and that is moving forward hopefully by August. He's looking at redoing the drive-in mural. Um, we'll see. It depends. The schedule is backed up somewhat because of all the, the delay as far as 
weather to get things kicked off this year. Um, Rotary has flag day tomorrow. So if anyone wants to help us put out flags at 6 a.m. or pick them up at 7, we'd love to help. Um, that's it. Thank you. Councilman James. Um, I just had the DBA. Uh, a couple of my things are pretty much off season at this point, but I had the DBA. They just discussed the meetings. Obviously, they've got the homebrew fest coming up. Uh, they're going to do another food truck carnival, which is cool. I was surprised by the last one because I'd been out of town uh, for pretty much every DBA meeting this year so far. But now I'm back, so I can go to those. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, if you want to know more, you could always get involved and go to the meetings <laughs> instead of sitting and listening to other people tell you. I'll just email you. I have several working emails, by the way. Uh, three minutes, sir. No joke. Is that it? That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Councilman Kleinschnitz. On uh, June 8th, I also uh, attended the local marketing district meeting. Uh, Randy uh, Luper did discuss his new position on council. And, and uh, talked about, thank you, and talked about uh, his no, new role on council and, and maybe a possibility of a conflict with serving on that, that board. That board, unanimous, uh, everyone present was just fine with Randy uh, continuing serving in that role. Uh, the, their cash on hand was 809 uh, $1,000 with obligations uh, subtracted from that, things that they've already uh, put grants forward to. They have $490,404 um, uh, balance, so a pretty healthy balance at this time. To re uh, iterate, the datafied contract was uh, rescinded. Uh, the uh, state of Colorado did send me uh, some information that would be very similar from datafy that was concerning Craig. So I, I did share that with, with the local marketing district and I think some of that basic information will get us to, to the information we need to go forward. Um, I had, uh, again, a, the third PSA with Blizzard Communications, KRA Radio. They've been very kind to uh, allow that hour. Um, I used that hour to uh, introduce Nikki Horn, the new manager at Browns Park National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, Georgia Raftopoulos uh, gave us updates on ranching and wild horse adoption. And uh, Terrell Turner with VLM talked about the wild horse adoption that's uh, occurring in Craig this weekend. So I wanted to make sure everybody knew about that, that wild horse adoption is happening. Uh, the showing is this Friday, and then uh, Saturday the actual auction will occur. A minimum of $125 a horse. They'll have... Uh, approximately 30, 35 horses from the Piance Creek Basin over to, uh, for that auction. So I think it's uh, going to bring a lot of people to town, a lot of interest, and uh, quite a controversial subject, if it were. So it was uh, nice to interview those guys. My next taping, uh, they're allowing me another one. Uh, number four will be July 6th. And perhaps like I started my uh, initial PSAs, I interviewed the mayor of Craig. Maybe the current mayor of Craig might want to step in for another interview for uh, city updates. Um, this Saturday is also the Yampa River Reggae Festival. I guess I could have. You might want to mention that, so I thought I'd mention it. <laughs> uh, that's at Loudy Simpson Park. It is free admission, and uh, it's uh, the second annual, and I, I believe that uh, it's just going to gain more and more success. So I ask everybody to support that effort. Get out there, spend some money with the vendors, and make that thing happen. I did meet with the, I went to the commissioner's meeting this morning. Uh, they did authorize the landfill contract for our, the fill. That's $67,000, simply line the bottom of one of the pits. So it's always interesting to see what it takes to handle landfill. Um, they did authorize two contracts for payment, uh, uh, payment number 19 and 20 to BHI for the courthouse. Um, those were authorized today. So far, as of May 31st, the uh, total cost to the county for that new courthouse is $21,972,424. So it'll, it's approaching $23 million as we, as we uh, go. Most of that was directed through grant, uh, federal grants. Uh, Open Hearts Advocates did a presentation. They're taking over two formerly Love, Inc. projects. 
They do a lot of other things for our community, but they're handling the PBJ program for food for kids and the backpack program, getting school supplies for the kids prior to school. Their goal this year for 2023 is to have 500 packs available for children. So again, the open heart advocates may be something that each of us should consider supporting for those two worthy causes. Uh, at the end of their meeting, they went into a couple of public hearings and then authorized a uh, Yampa Valley Wind LLC for uh, some uh, wind projects, wind projection towers. They'll go up and test and see what kind of winds we have in our area. So those were approved. So again, some alternate energy sources are showing up in our valley. That's that. it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I also attended the Brownsfield uh, Community Outreach uh, event. Um, and like I said, as was mentioned, pretty good ideas. Um, obviously, a lot of potential for our downtown area, you know, but just the issue that we continue to run into is, you know, these, these involve private uh, properties. And so, you know, just continuing to, to hopefully find a way to reach out to them and, and, and getting them to the table with these conversations because the, the designs and, and the ideas are wonderful, um, but that's obviously been the hurdle and that's the continuing hurdle. Um, Attended a few meetings with the Whittle the Wood Committee and the county, commis county commis commissioners out at Loudy Simpson uh, to discuss potential movement, which we are planning to move the event to, Lout or to uh, the fairgrounds. Um, we even discussed late last week to see the potential of keeping it out at Loudy, and um, it just isn't, isn't going to be happening this year. And so Ryan and his staff have done a great job of, of moving forward and getting a contingency plan. And, and hopefully it's a, it's a real successful event at the new location. So thank you for all the, the effort and time. Um, attended with Peter uh, on the, the, so, the solar field tour um, out east of town. Um, pretty impressive project, obviously, that is moving along quite quickly. Um, completion date, what, September, they're hoping? It's early September. Early September. Um, obviously, I'm sure everyone's noticed the construction going on and it's it's quite impressive you know they, they did a great job with the tour and um i believe this is the largest dola funded solar project is that correct so far, is that what dana said that's correct, yeah. so pretty pretty impressive right here in our backyard um where else do i have upcoming uh i have a planning and zoning next monday the 19th and then the uh edac meeting uh june 26th and I just also want to make a comment on Parks and Rec. It looks like there's over 300 kids signed up for soccer. And so if there's anybody in the audience or knows anybody that wants to volunteer for coaching or, or refs or, or anything out there, you know, Ryan's built a great program out there and it just continues to grow and any help would be appreciative, I would imagine, for, for, sure. for Travis. Thank so you. great job growing the program. Now we just need to staff it. And other than that, that's all I have. Right, moving on to, to six, this will be public comment number one. Um, looks like we have a fairly full audience, so this is the time for anyone within the audience to, to step up and comment on things within the city of Craig. And if you could just limit them to three minutes or less, I'd be appreciative. My name's Ken Worgen. Uh, as you can see, uh, I've got a little walkability problem, but uh, my walker has helped solve some of that. Uh, I can't do what I have done in the past, and that is picking up trash along the roadways in the city. I wish somebody would step up and do that. My proposal is that I would take my truck into that effort and get get the um, person that has to do some community service some direction and some enthusiasm i've done this for about 20 years and i've worked with a lot of people and i found that they changed their opinion of what goes on and they really 
ended up liking me. <laughs> and uh, I, I proposed that to some of the people here that I could help, but I would direct it uh, as the driver of my truck. So if you have any thoughts on that, I would appreciate it. Thank you. I think that's an excellent idea, Ken. Useful community service. Thank you for that. And I love you. Thanks, Ken. My name, hello. Uh, thank you everyone, today was great. Uh, I really respect all the public service that people do. But um, seeing those three people today, like the officers and being awarded, that was amazing. Um, my name is Brianna Parsons. Um, I was the former chair of the Democratic Party. So I also wanna let people know we need a Democratic Party chair, um, especially since I am running independently uh, for office in plan two. Um, just putting an idea out there with uh, talking to Peter about a Craig bus loop, maybe, um, at some point. And uh, we watch the meetings all the time on uh, the live stream that I do, Breezy B. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, I'm just excited to be here today. It's very nice. It's a beautiful day to be here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. You need help, huh, John? What's that? Yeah, totally. We all need help, right? Um, hey, guys, I'm John Miller. Uh, guys, uh, we were up here about almost two years, two years ago. ago. Um, and we filled this chamber with parents and young people throughout this valley uh, in support of building a concrete skate park in our town. Um, since that, has, uh, that, that event, um, we have teamed up with the Yampa Valley Community Foundation um, and we've held a couple of fundraisers. We've raised about $4,000 to date. Um, and we've had quite a few meetings with Peter and Ryan. Um, and, you know, the, the conversation continues to progress. Uh, Woodbury, um, I don't know what you call that piece of land, the, the annex next to Woodbury Sports Complex um, has been acquired. Um, and that was one of the big kind of first hurdles of where are we going to put this thing. Um, we explored all sorts of conversations, you know, from the college to Loudy, um, got a lot of feedback and, you know, Woodbury kind of like came up, uh, the land was acquired. Uh, we've put some um, posts out there through our, our social media channels and we've, um, we're getting good feedback from parents and others in the community that, you know, Woodbury is like the place that uh, they would prefer based on against the other things we were kind of proposing with Loudy or, or other places. So um, I think we're getting some traction um, where we're at today. I don't know if you want to, if I missed anything. I'm just no, kind of like just, catching um, up. My name is Gail Martinez. Sorry. Um, I'm actually on the advisory um, board for Parks and Rec. And uh, we're just excited to work with the city and um, We've talked with Brian about um, exploring some options out at Woodbury with a pickleball court and a skate park. So um, I know they kind of committed some funds to kind of look at uh, how much that would all cost for the city and how we could get funds. Um, but uh, we just wanted to kind of check in with you guys and let you know that we're still moving forward. We still have a lot of interest and um, we're still here and yeah. we're plugging along. Yeah, a couple other notes. Um, Emmanuel in Hayden has been pushing uh, for a skate park in, in their town. Uh, that has been approved. They're actually moving forward. They're making pretty rapid progress. Um, we've been connected with the builder of that, uh, that's slated for that project. Um, so there's still conversations that we're exploring. Um, and what else? Uh, we, we actually, we're also kind of looking for a space. So this is maybe a call to action. If anybody knows of a good indoor space with smooth concrete that we could store some ramps and, um, you know, have some more frequent fundraising events, you know, a place to bring the kids. And um, we've got a bunch of uh, donated 
skateboards that, you know, loaners that people can use if they don't have that equipment themselves. Um, and with the events that we've had, they've turned out really well. You know, it's kind of heartbreaking when, you know, the event's over and the, the kids come up and they're like, are, you, are we go doing this again next weekend? And you're like, well, we don't really have a space yet, but stay tuned. And, you know, the interest is, is definitely there. So, um, you know, but it's like with Emmanuel and Hayden, um, the county actually gave them uh, an indoor building next to the fairgrounds where they were able to host a bunch of events and um, they got quite a bit of kind of community support, community together that um, I think gave them a lot of traction. And it, that's been kind of a hard thing to find for us over here. Uh, we've used, you know, the Loudy uh, parking lot, um, donated ramps and a lot of effort from a lot of folks up, the, up and down the valley that have helped us pull these events off. And, you know, it's just kind of difficult without like an indoor covered space where we can store these ramps and, and do something more regular. So um, if you know anybody, that would be a, a way that uh, people could be helpful um, in our efforts moving forward. And uh, what else? Call to action. You know, we're still here. Um, we want to, um, we'd love to have, you know, more involvement from adults in the community. I think the kids are into it, but, you know, um, we're all busy. We all have jobs, but, you know, if people have time um, and want to contribute to our efforts, uh, we welcome that as well. So um, yep. appreciate. Are you guys going to be at the festival? This one. Uh, we're not. We weren't able to. Yeah, the ramps that we used last year were committed for another event in Hayden that same weekend. So we gotcha. You know, uh, oddly enough, I'm not going to be there either because I have to work. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we've kind of explored the idea of just having some ramps out at Woodbury parking lot on a non-busy night, like a non-soccer night, and just, you know, having some loaner boards out there and get, letting kids come out there and try skateboarding and just kind of get a little momentum going. I have, any questions? I have a right. question. Um, aside from your fundraising efforts, uh, have you honed in on any grants that would be possible for um, something like yeah, this? Yeah, so we've, uh, so I was participating in the, um, what was the committee? Uh, dang it. I was, I was part of, I think, an economic development committee mm -hmm. last year. We were trying to go after a GOCO Centennial grant, um, but it wasn't shovel ready at the time. So it's kind of cart before the horse to go to GOCO. You know, there's a lot of money out there, but to get shovel ready is really kind of the next step, um, which means that we need to go through engineering and design process. Um, so kind of the next step of funding that, that we're looking to gain, um, I don't, I think I've maybe heard 50K as as a figure that could get us moving in that direction. Um, and we're, we're aware of different grants that would, that would fund the, the design and engineering. And once we get back past that step, then we can start looking for the larger grants. Right. But um, obviously it's not something we can do a grassroots effort funding for a project like this. So we're going to have to look first. Right. And so the foundation is working with you on, on that. I forget their whole name. Uh, the Yampa Valley Community Foundation. Yes, yes, so they, yes. they basically um, are fiscal agents, so right. we didn't have to go through the, the 501c3 process. Um, so that gave us the ability to raise funds kind of behind them. Um, we don't have a use of funds for that yet. The idea was to build momentum, and then that way, you know, now we have dollars that we could use to, you know, build some ramps or hold some events or, you know, buy some radio ads or, or whatever we need to do to kind of build the momentum. Um, but, you know, initially we were trying to, thinking we, were, we could raise a lot of money and get through that kind of design process on our own. Um, that's proven to be a little more difficult than we expected. So um, that's where we started talking to the city because, you know, there are funds like GoCo, for example, and to have the city as uh, I forgot the terminology, but basically fiscal agent, right, um, you know, is a much, much better prospect uh, for success. So, so since you haven't been able to go through the design steps, you really don't know how much is, this is going to be in the end? 
um, long it's going to be. Yeah, idea. we have ballparks. Yeah. First, you have to find your land and get your design right. engineering. Right. Go for the big dollars. That's our understanding of it. Right. Good luck. How firm? How firm are you on that fifty thousand? Um, I, I think that's a ballpark right now. Ryan, I, yeah. I yeah, so I think that's where that EOPC comes from with the design and engineering to see exactly what, you know, starting there on the project, what exactly does this cost, you know, and then then you can, then we can go kind of map it out from there. Here's design and engineering, here's total project cost. You know, without that, we're, it's just shooting at the hip, you know. So Ryan, budget talks are coming up. And this is something the community has asked for and has a lot of support. Is this something we should consider or, or in your budget or? Yeah, you bet. So right now we're working, um, trying to, in our parks and recreations operation budget, um, pulling some money aside for, to get that figure, you know, working with a firm to, to get that, that budgetary number and then build off from there um, in lieu of budget season, so. And we could close the wave pool down and then put it there. Yeah, no comment there. Be a lot less maintenance costs. I, I think we filled this room with just about as many people for the wave pool. Probably way more. <laughs> for sure. So, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, said. well, thank you for your work. Yeah, I appreciate the update. It's amazing how many times we I've been asked of, of what's going on with the potential skate park and so thanks for the update and yeah i think like <coughs> woodbury's obviously the i've thought since day one that's the place where it would need to be if we can get to that point so more yeah, i think it's like sonic skate park <laughs> yeah. there you go we're done here we, we <laughs> did what we could yeah. <laughs> at least with the sonic um, i believe we're going to get this done Not sooner than later, uh, you'll keep seeing us in front of you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I know we're not supposed to ask questions, but you know, we got to. <laughs> I know next time you guys should call ahead and get on the agenda. Yeah. yeah. So yeah give, give, a, give and take that way. Hello. Um, <laughs> my name's Maya. Um, I have lived here in Craig for about three years now. And one of the things that I've found is that my partner and I live at the Timber Glen Apartments. And there's so little way to get to where the jobs are here in town that there's, if I hadn't had my car, I wouldn't have been able to find a job here in Craig at all. Like, I know Brianna mentioned earlier the idea of a public bus loop. And that's something that I just want to kind of talk about, especially with this town. I recently lost my job and finding work is very difficult here. And I can only imagine if I didn't have like a car to at least get to interviews and stuff like that. So when we think about like the things that we need to do for this community, we have to think about things like that where there's so many people who live in the apartment buildings that I do that don't have the ability to even find work because they're stuck in the middle of nowhere. So we need to talk about projects like a public bus loop so that those people can get to work, so that people can do things to further their life. It's something that's really sad about this, this town that I've come to love over these past three years. And I think it's something that we really need to talk about. So let's try to bring up the discussion of public transportation in Craig. Thank you so much for the time and I hope you all have a lovely day. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, uh, moving on. Public hearing, we have done. Uh, 8A, other business. Award of a bid uh, from Victory Motors in the amount of 34495 for a one-ton cabin chassis of 19850 for a flatbed with hoist for the road and bridge department. Trevor? So our budget for this flatbed Single cab pickup is $62,000. The total complete truck comes in right around 55000 and puts us under budget. So requesting to put a PO in for the purchase of this truck. It's the about the only one that we've put out for this year that's under budget. So counter wins. Questions? 
What is? Oh. I don't have a question. I was just going to make a motion. Yeah, anytime. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. I make a motion to award the bid to Victory Motors for a one-ton cabin chassis and nineteen thousand eight fifty for a flatbed to who? Victory Motors. Both of them. Yeah. No. Okay. No. Put the uh, flatbed on. Nineteen thousand eight fifty. Second. Under budget. All right. I got a motion on the table by uh, Councilman Nichols and a second by Councilman James. Uh, is there any discussion? Maybe just for the back of your minds during budget session, we need to start thinking creatively about how to keep our fleet updated. Because it's like we had a plan for that at one, one point. Yeah, well, <laughs> just a, that was your job. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I did my part. We had to listen. <laughs> I'll throw that out there. We had to listen to him for it to work. So I, I just want to put that out there. What What is the year of the truck that you're trading in? Is it on that sheet? I don't. I think it's a 2012, I believe, going off memory. I didn't even put the. I didn't even put. There's a trade in for. We had a really good trade in. Is actually what's making this work. The trade in was, 20. Four. Uh, 28,500 is the trade in. I believe it's a 2012 um, Ram 3500 is what it was. So the trade in came in goods, otherwise, we wouldn't have been under budget. But these trucks are basically any vehicles coming in $15,000 higher than what we forecasted. And we thought we, we added, you know, to last year's numbers. So it's hard to, hard to predict what vehicle prices are going to do so more discussion all right all in favor aye aye, aye. all opposed the motion passes all right nine uh, discussions discuss open board appointment slots from previous council members and update or change current board appointments how would we like to do this? Just go down the list, or do you have? Yeah, if that's good, good with you folks. Uh, yeah, let's just go down the list, and if there's any openings that anybody <clears throat> wants to volunteer for, please do. And if there's any revisions or people want to trade out, let's just discuss that. And you can see the vacancies on the on the list in red and blue for Sean Pavorka and Ryan Hess. Okay. Uh, public safety. We have Tom. I can take that on. Okay. Is the second column, is that just a backup? Backup. Back back up. I can be backup for that. Okay. Thank you. Planning and zoning, myself and Chris. Uh, Parks and Rec, we have Jesse. I'll take backup. Heiser on Parks and Rec. Perfect. Uh, personnel, Paul James, Chris Nichols, EDAC. Myself and Tom, uh, Joint Service Work Group, that's so good there. Uh, charter Review. I'll take that. Eight. Thank you, Vicki. Uh, on to Board Appointments. Board of Appeals, we need a backup. It's like not very often. I think I've met one time on the Board of Appeals, so. I can be backup for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Club 20. I'll be back up for that, too. CNCC, Colorado River District. I guess I'll take that on. Municipal League. You miss, you know, mm -hmm. I, can, I can take back up unless anyone else would like to. Policy committee, we're talking. Yeah, the Colorado Municipal. Oh, sorry, I, committee. I skipped one. I yeah. was on River District. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, policy committee. What can you? Yeah, describe what it is. That doesn't necessarily require that you travel to Denver. It used to, all the time. But CML has 
uh, formed a committee of appointments from various boards and city managers across the state. They meet uh, during the legislative session to review different legislative pieces of legislation. Pieces of legislation. They also look at uh, legislative initiatives that uh, uh, the board, the policy committee would like CML to support. And uh, <clears throat> so it's a, it's a pretty interactive group. There's usually about 80 to 100 people in this group. Um, that, uh, and now they're meeting, I think they uh, meet online routinely now instead of uh, all, always going to Denver. But uh, it gives you a chance to be involved in the legislative process, understand what's coming down the pipe, and also to uh, uh, pu provide public comment if you oppose or support certain pieces of legislation. I can go ahead and do that. Since Mayor has had that, I'll, I'll step in. All right, next up, uh, Colorado River District. Tom, we have you as the primary. Okay. That works. I don't know who might back me up. Buddy, when are they usually? Yeah. <laughs> Quar it looks like quarterly. Quarterly. No, I can back you up on that, Tom. Uh, next up, looks like we have down DBA, Downtown Business Association. Paul is primary. I'll back up Paul because I'm go to those. You missed, we? Um, so if you do that, uh, that does put three of us at the same meeting because Tom's there for Oh, MCTA. then never mind. So, and I mean, he kind of acted oh. as backup so, when I was traveling all so the So my question is, with other meetings like DBA that I normally go to, so LMD, it's things not, like that, how does that work? As long as we're not as talking as about as any policy right? yeah like and i mean and really even making decisions like you can discuss it legally um without providing like trying to sway anybody else like things like that and that's all sunshine state law stuff right. so we can still all be there um can but you? yeah we can't be like that's the reason why i'm asking because with lmd <clears throat> we were told that i would support heather's opinion on yeah that. The issue becomes if you're starting to discuss or make decisions concerning the city. Yeah. Okay. Um, then that's where it would need to be posted as an open meeting. So as long as we know, wait, but the DBA never posts an agenda, and they just talk. Yeah. They, well, they do. They started. Yeah, they started to. to. They yeah. started to, but just they don't listening. do it 24 hours in advance. So they maybe need to do that. I'm not sure, okay. but this is part of my employment too. So. Right. Yeah. So well, and like I said, it, if you're not, already there. That's like, fine. My question is, yeah, it's as long as we're not go to, you know, making right. decisions regarding the city. It's okay. okay. It's okay. just, but it is just like, that's the only reason that I brought that up is because it's we need to just make sure that you know, right. Obviously, I'm not going to do that because right. it's not really my thing to decide things for other people. Oddly enough, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, that so is. I guess that means I'm I'm not allowed to go anymore. You can go. It's, yeah. it's the, the same purview for. Yeah. Every single person here could show up we could at the go. same time. We cannot discuss, discuss anything like decisions that will be made. Essentially, right. that's the that's the key point there. Okay. So same thing. I mean, it's the same thing in emails. It's very. I know a couple councils ago there was a lot of problems with that, and that's probably why I'm aware of them. So do much. not reply at all. <laughs> won't if we for charter review if Derek and. Um, are there you should not be there well i'm not giving up my seat on charter well no and, I, and I would down. be willing to step down since vicky's been involved on charter review right. mm -hmm. she wants to slide unless into that the meeting. unless we post the meeting if we post it at the meeting then the three of you can be there were we not before well we never really had three people. yeah i thought I, yeah but we were still posting them anyway for the charter um, review i never saw and liz says yes <laughs> and i thought we were anyway so we, we're good on yeah. that. And with it being midday Mondays, chances are I won't be able to attend those. Yeah, so. Mondays are actually a day. I, like, I can keep those, although we won't have anything until next year, and who knows if I'll be here. <laughs> so, Vicki, we'll just put you as primary. Yep. If you're good, good with that. Thank you. And then does that committee need to appoint someone in her place? Community that member. would that would be a, a yeah that would be a citizen. That's something we can we don't need to address okay. right now. Okay, sounds good. 
All right, I skipped one. Uh, community that cares. I, does anyone, Peter, do you know? What, it's, have you met that with them? Okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what that is. The community that cares. What do they do? Maybe you should find out. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> All right, councilman. Councilman. Go to Maine. Huh? They, they've been kind of hit and miss here in uh, in town. They've gone through some leadership leadership changes. I I've attended one or two of their meetings about three or four years ago, and. Uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not sure how active. Yeah, how, how active. I, they are. I don't mind that part. I just like to know what they care about. I guess it's a it's a youth uh, support organization. Oh, I don't like teenagers. <laughs> 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 I had four. I done. <laughs> there goes the teenage uh -huh. vote. They're part of our community. Not my community. <laughs> Going once. On twice? Nope. <laughs> All right, I'll put myself down. There you go. You're good with teens. There you go. So I guess, Peter, if you find out when they meet, keep me in the loop, would you please? <laughs> it says here third Tuesday at noon, but uh, where? Do you have any, who's, who's, who's the contact or who's the director? Do you know? I don't. Okay. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, Got DBA figured, LMD. I figured I'd do that. Perfect. I, yeah. Okay. So we got Randy and Tom. I'm always there. So. Uh, Moffat County Airport Board on primary um, meetings are. Can I back up? Uh, yep. LMD. Who who's uh, taking the primary position on that one? LMD. I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Is that an issue? Well, I think we're looking for a council representative too. Okay. Why, well, Tom, why don't you move to a lead spot? And you then know, I'll do backup. You attend most of those meetings. I you? always you do. Yeah. Those. And I'll back up Tom on that. So we'll have we'll have Tom and Chris and Randy. Okay. Uh, Moffat County Airport Board. Um, it's pretty basic. Meetings are usually canceled, but every once in a while they have. I can do it. So. It's the first Monday of the month. All right, so I'll put Jackson. It's not during football season. Kind of interferes with the land board for me. Uh, Memorial Regional Health Board. Looks like we had both Ryan and Sean on that, so. I can take that. I'll put you as primary, and if, does anybody want to be secondary? I'll do secondary. Uh, Northwest Color Development Council. I'll take that. Uh, victims advocate. I'm primary, and I. I think I've heard of one meeting, so maybe. There's not much to that unless I'm not here in any of the meetings. And the other one is the... I can be a backup one. for victims advocates. All right. Thanks, Paul. And then Yamp Valley Airport Commission, Chris, so... My term is up. Your term is up. So if anybody else wants it, I'll put that on the table first. It's once every other month, either Hayden or Steamboat, the meetings. You can log in virtually. Um, but so you can do that. You want it? Sure. Okay, I'll back you up. We need a letter for with Randy on that. So, so Chris, you're going to move to back, back up, and yeah. Randy will be primary, and so he'll have to submit a, a letter. Yeah. Okay. okay. And the county should approve that as well too, because you're representing Moffat County and City of Craig. Uh, Yampa River Fund with Melanie and myself. Um, I can continue doing it unless there's any interest for it. Okay. So that completes the list, Mr. Mayor. But I, I was wondering how 
you know, there may be a lot of other organizations probably would love to have this, and I don't mean that we're obligated enough, but the senior center has, has come to me and asked that, that I'd have a liaison. And I would step up and do that if, if that were appropriate, or how do we add to this list? I mean, I feel like the list has been made up as time goes on, mm. so we could probably continue making it up. It. So I, I, yeah. I would propose that we add the senior center and that I would be a primary. Well, yeah, because there's actually nothing in the city charter about this being any sort of requirement or part of what we do. So I'll be back up on that. On I'm the like senior center? People, just not oh, so, so you're just really <laughs> picking demographics, huh? That's right. All right, Vicki. <laughs> well, you know. Because they're not teenagers. <laughs> I would be inappropriate to, uh, you know. <laughs> Liz, can you go ahead and add that the spreadsheet? Um, anything else? <clears throat> All right. Well, I appreciate everyone stepping up. If the rec district committee needs something, so the end. Yeah. Are they active? Well, I don't right even. Now? I don't even know yeah, if they're active if anymore. anymore. I think yeah. they gave up their. Uh, John, what about you guys? Do you guys have regular meetings right now, or? If it gets organized, let us know, and then we can add you guys to the list too. Okay. So, well, I think it's helpful that Gail is on the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee, also. So I think that's probably. And I'm on the Economic and, Development yep, Committee so as well. you guys are tied in pretty well. All right, we'll look forward to an updated spreadsheet, and then council reports will be really long now. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to describe every single thing that goes on. Like, <laughs> half the time, like, Didn't I mean. want to know about the dump lighter? 67 days? <laughs> All right. We can just go. Moving forward, uh, public comment number two. Okay. Hi, Brianna Parsons again. Wanted to share information how to reach out about uh, running for like I'm running for council, but I'll totally help if you want to run for council or if you want to take over the Democratic Party as chair um, Or you want to work on the Craig bus loop uh, project idea. Um, I'm gonna share my email spelt out B R I E N N A P A R S O N S 22 at gmail.com and that's two two at gmail.com G M A il.com okay thank you thank you all right staff reports 11a police report for the month of may 2023 chief thank you mayor council uh, you should have in front of you our normal monthly stat report um, if you'll look at the third column on that you'll see that this past month, May, everything increased, uh, some of it quite drastically. Uh, not uncommon as we're going into the summer months, uh, but nothing really significant um, to mention on those, those calls. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to share with you, one that we are super proud of and have spent quite a lot time trying to get ready for this. <coughs> May the 1st, we filed for our CACP accreditation. And for those of you that are not familiar with that, that's the Colorado Association of Chiefs of Police that uh, accredited us that we have policies that are pretty much standardized across the state. Um, it also, I believe, helps with our, uh, the city's liability insurance if we get that accreditation but it requires a lot of tedious work. Uh, upwards of 200 standards that we have to prove that we meet to file for that, and it's typically an 18 to 24 month process once you start. Uh, did hear from them last week. Uh, they'll be sending a, an assessor out to go through our policies. 
be sure that we're in compliance and hopefully then get our accreditation back because I think it had lapsed back in 2017 if I'm not not mistaken uh, another exciting thing as you know we uh, or you funded our computer project last year to put computers in all the patrol cars May the third and fourth the docking stations were installed and we're 100 percent up and running now uh, which means that the officers can check tags, they can check driver's license, uh, they can do it from their phone by scanning the barcode on the license, they can scan the barcode on the registration card and have all that information pre-populated in the system. Uh, with that, part of uh, another component to that is we were going to the e-summons, so we're in the final testing phase of e-summons and what that would do is it would alleviate us having to bring written copies to court. They would be transmitted automatically once the officer issues the summons. Um, in May, May 16th, we held the uh, D.A.R.E. graduation at Craig Middle School. We had 137 students this year graduate from the D.A.R.E. program, which was great to see. Uh, really good turnout for that event. We have started hosting um, classes that are open to anybody in the state. So May the 23rd and 24th, we held a interview class that was conducted by CBI, and we had officers from all over the Northwest Corridor that attended that course, and multiple from our agency that got to attend. Uh, as you heard earlier tonight, we are currently hosting another class that was open statewide, and that was the DRE class that was mentioned earlier. Short of that, a lot of training that has gone on. The training has really increased, which we knew once we got closer to full staff that we'd be able to do. So very proud of that. And with that, if anybody has any questions. I don't have a question, but I want to point out that you guys saw a 17% increase in uh, just incidents and your response time decreased. Mm -hmm. So good job on Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just have two comments for the chief. <clears throat> Number one, um, your Lifesaver Award tonight, um, I'm not sure if the community really recognizes CPR as the Early CPR and defibrillation are is the key to its success. Yes. Your officers are on scene, but close by. So people really understand how many CPRs are successful. Being an EMT for almost 30 years, I can say I've done many that weren't successful and a few that have been. So that is a pretty significant task that your officers, our, our officers, really brought that individual back. So that's a huge accomplishment, number one. Number two, the mayor alluded to this on your fully staffed position. In today's society, police officers is not your first choice yes, of, of a career, but I compliment you and your staff for achieving that status. And a lot of us can remember how many of you were down. Eight, seven, eight, eight, eight at one time. At one time when you took the job. Yes, so I appreciate the job you're doing. Thank you. And the mobile data terminals, your new red, if they're keeping them on the street, good. They are excellent. Okay. Excellent. <clears throat> I will say that you mentioned the CPR um, some time ago, I think it was a couple of months ago, the city was able to obtain some AEDs for different locations. And we decided as department heads that we were going to have a 100% city certified in CPR. So we've kicked that off. Uh, we have several in the building here that have already completed the class and we'll be doing the checkoffs next week uh, because the, the police department has a training center for CPR, AED, and first aid. Um, so we're excited about that as well. Going real good with that. Can we get some money for defibrillators or? Yeah. 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 I think perhaps, yeah, it actually came through.
All right. Okay. Thank you, Chief, for bringing uh, our police department back up to where it should be. Appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, you and Commander Conrad are asset to Craig. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thanks, Chief. KD. <laughs> Finance report. I'm not I, saying that. We missed you last time. You guys so. thought you were getting away from April, didn't you? Because I wasn't here the last time. <laughs> Trying. <laughs> God. <laughs> So I will make it quick because it is April and I'll have another update for you at the next meeting with me. I know. <coughs> I can't wait. Huh? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> uh, so four months or 33% through the year. 17% uh, of the 2023 budget has been spent. 31% of the O&M budget has been spent. Again, most departments are currently at or below budget for the year. Um, some of the same variances could... Um, throughout all departments, same as last month uh, with the health benefits, chewing that up from, from last year's adjustments that we had made in the budget. Uh, so those are consistent variances that you'll see throughout all departments. Um, operating expenditures for 2023 are more than 2022 by about 685,000. Um, because of the details it, within the departments, a lot of that is the, um, the health benefits and retirement changes that were made in last year's budget and train that up this year. Um, in addition to the bonus payout that was awarded to the employees. Uh, general fund revenues, 33% of the year complete, 18% of the budgeted revenues have been received and it's a 14% or 554,000 increase from prior year. So trending a little bit shy from the increase that we're seeing in expenditures, but revenues tend to trend a little bit behind, especially with some of like the sales tax where we collect those. We have some lag time with the collection on some of those kinds of things. Uh, property taxes, 37% received year to date. County sales tax, 25% received year to date. And that would actually be where we have the, the lag time there, so that's actually right on target. Um, city sales tax, 32% received year to date, about a 240,000 increase from prior year. Licenses and permits, 42% received year to date, about an 8,000 increase from prior year, and that's just within the, um, both the city building and county building permits. Are both just continuing to trend higher than prior year. Let's see. Charges for services. I wanted to mention here because I did have in the prior month's report um, how the the recreation youth sports was down. Well, it definitely caught back up and is even um, a little bit ahead of where it was last year. So that's good news there. I'm starting to see some numbers filling into uh, the Whittle the Wood revenue numbers there. So we'll continue to see those broken out um, in the future months as we get closer to that event. Fines and costs, 68% received year to date and about a 15,000 increase over prior year. Uh, interest continues to climb up um, over 5% both for Hollow Trust and CSA. Um, we, uh, investment interest income so far this year is about 391,000 allocated across the funds. Um, in the general fund, that's a $230,000 increase uh, from the prior year almost. Checking interest in the general fund is roughly 14,000 over prior year. So. Uh, fund balance for the general fund started the year at 17 million, 13.1 of which was unreserved. Current fund balance is 17.3 million, 13.4 uh, is unreserved. Um, I'm not going to go through the balances and the other funds tonight, unless you guys have any questions. <laughs> Paul says no. <laughs> Um, one other thing I wanted to touch on is the, the annual audit 
presentation is slated to happen the first meeting in July where we'll have our external auditors presenting the uh, year in financial results. Um, nothing to note, so that's, that's a good thing. Um, and then the budget calendar should be coming out very soon. No, you all can't wait. <laughs> It'll be very similar to last year. So I'll, I'll apologize in advance. I'm not going to be any better. On what budget? Yeah. You know, I actually I like your bad. budget. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Katie, you sure you can't move that auditor report to the last meeting where I'm not going to be? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's different yeah. people now. It wasn't too painful last year, I don't think. <laughs> Never yeah, mind. The year before was a little worse, I think, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Last year was much better. I think it'll be Kevin presenting, and I think he presented last year, if I remember right. So. Very Any important, questions? though. Yeah. Nope. Chris loves the budget. Yeah. I do, too. So. <laughs> I wonder why. Like, it's weird that you have the job that you do. <laughs> I was like, I like weed, and I sell it for a living. <laughs> How did I get there? <clears throat> Yeah, this is recording. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> nope. yeah. All right, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. 11C, Parks and Rec update. Ryan. Good evening, Council. Uh, a few things just to update on Parks and Recreation. So uh, one being Whittle of the Wood. After we've been monitoring Lottie for quite some time, had multiple meetings out there um, with staff and, like the mayor mentioned, our Whittle of the Wood planning team. Um, you know, it was just... Uh, I think the conditions and some concerns to have Willow Wood out there um, uh, made the made the change to to have it at the uh, to pivot and go to the fairgrounds. Fortunate uh, that was that venue was open. Um, so what uh, um, we'll be making we can have a good good layout um, of the facility. Our carvers will be on Highway 40 for some good exposure. Uh, a lot of the um, activity will be in that turf area right um, where that pavilion is uh, by come and go and um, the big parking lot will have that that um, their east uh, dirt parking lot will be for parking um, the stage uh, we'll put that in the arena um, at the fairgrounds there uh, so there'll be some uh, update or some associated costs with that uh, getting the stage um, some generators uh, things like that the uh, chief informed me potentially we can uh, get reimbursement, submit those to the state uh, due to the flooding. So we'll keep those and, and kind of track those um, as well. But I think we have a, a really good plan. Um, you know, obviously you don't want to move that. We're really comfortable, we, you know, the setup out there and everything. But uh, we're going to give it our best shot. And I think we have a, a really good solid plan um, at the fairgrounds. So. Uh, Ryan, yeah, uh, I just this, I just remembered this. The ad on eighty nine point seven that plays on the radio still says it's going to be out loud. Yeah. So just yeah, I yeah. keep hearing that, and I'm like, God, I need to talk. I need to tell Ryan. I need to, and I just, but now I remember it. So. Oh, appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, that I think that airs like every day. It's, every it's a really day. multiple yeah. times a day. Too. I mean, you really get your money's worth. Uh, yeah. out of that. No, they they are good about advertising. Yeah, yeah. But nonetheless, like I'm sure that it wouldn't be a problem for him to change that. Yeah. It's on the list for sure. So that's the thing. We're, we have some rat cards. We're going to, um, in the process tomorrow, we'll get those rat cards with an event schedule, get those out to some restaurants uh, on those tabletops, uh, go with uh, Bear River Young Life, some event organizers, disperse them in um, uh, so we can, with the updated venue change, get some good signage out there, uh, promote that on Highway 40, um, and then redirected um, on some of our marketing at, uh, aspects uh, of the new venue change as well. Ryan, do you have any idea how about how many people can be inside that arena versus being out? On, I was just curious there versus being out on with using the grandstands and being out in the center track. I don't. I maybe Melody might know. I don't really have a. I, do. a, I think curious. Melody could tell you exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she can cram in there. Yep. But yeah, I think you know we'll use that to real quick on the um, that pavilion, that parking lot there. We'll do our silent auction, our quick carve has more space. We'll get that spread out, get public in there, and engage. So we'll, I think we have a pretty good salt uh, setup for 
for the quick time, you know. So, uh, any questions on Willowwood? Do you have a ballpark, or do you, or do you think the, the new co increase in cost would be to move it? Yeah, as far as um, so, can tell you offhand, this, this stage for around forty five hundred, uh, a, a thousand or two for the generators, and then a couple hundred um, for some marketing efforts on there. So. Yeah, right around there. Yeah. Uh, real quick, just some highlights on uh, other um, things going on in our world. Our aquatics uh, facility had a kind of a, a shaky start um, to our season. So we just started an extended uh, winter. You know, we not really, typically we can get in there early, early spring in our facility and start doing maintenance. Uh, in the pool, we had an extended winter, really couldn't get into the pool shells, things like that. Um, so, you know, when the when we were able to finally get into into the wave pool, there was some damage uh, that uh, that was noticeable, and it was the safety uh, issues associated with that. Some of the sidewalls, um, of the concrete kind of sloughed off. Um, some other things like that, some interior cracking of the 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 plaster itself. Um, so the staff did awesome. They worked uh, nonstop as far as um, really to try to hit a target date. We were a week off of what our anticipated target date was opening. So it was June 10th, last Saturday we opened the wave pool, but um, just did a great job uh, to get ready for that. We had a, a contractor in there uh, simultaneously while uh, staff was replumbing a new uh, chemical system in both pools, so um, which is fantastic. Uh, got that finished up, and they were they were inside plumbing the new chlorination system, and was able to um, to get it open. Um, rough start, uh, like I mentioned. Not only that, but um, the weather hasn't been conducive to um, to swimming. But the bright side of the things are uh, we have a lot of event bookings, private parties. Uh, things of that nature. So kind of excited to see as we progress kind of what that looks like there. Um, like I hit on on the um, the chlorination systems, we used to do liquid chlorine um, as, a, as a form of chlorination. So this year we went into a tablet um, chlorination. So um, hopefully it's going to be less cost of, you know, or less cost associated with that. Um, and deliver for like efficiency uh, where those tablets sit in a hopper and it can just uh, really regulate that um, amount of chlorine that's going into the system. Um, staff did the lap pool and to date um, and you know they're and those guys are just not all stars and on what that pool maintenance but you know in 20 years that has been you know today it's been on point with the new uh, system so really great news on on that on that side of things on the pool so um, real quick and then working towards uh, on our capital uh, uh, items in parks and recreation we got the Ledford Finley trail segment that fence um, up so that's done uh, looks pretty sharp uh, out there and then working um, City Park and the new volleyball uh, um, court there replacing that with new uh, Kerman gutter and that will be um, looking like completed this week what depending on weather and um working towards uh woodbury park uh, improvement project july 10th we'll uh tentatively kick that off once baseball season's over and we're right now working working through um through the plans there as we speak so a, a lot of stuff happening good things though as well any questions ryan how is staffing going at the pool this year is it better than it was or is it still hard no, oh, it's uh, it is better. Um, uh, we're fully staffed over there. Yeah, so fully staffed, but a young staff, and but we can work with that um, for sure. They're they're capable uh, for sure, and they're energetic and motivated. So yeah, and and the, appreciate the those wages from last um, last budget session. So really helps. I know an, an email was sent in regards to the damage to the wave pool. Was any of that warranty work, or is that all out of pocket? Yeah, so uh, that cost roughly out of pocket was around forty-five, five thousand. 
but the I spoke with the installers that did the plaster that we plastered it. We did that in twenty twenty one, and um, they'll come back this fall and do the shell part where that interior, those hairline cracks uh, were out. Really can't on those side walls if that's new or old or anything like that. Which is a good thing. I appreciate you know that they're coming back once we we close up. So. So Ryan, what are you projecting the, this might be a weird question, especially from an old guy, the band turnout to be this year? The band turnout? Yeah. Great, I'm hope. I, you know, it surprised me when I saw the lineup. Like I said, especially from an old guy, but. Yeah, I, I'm hopeful it, it'll be a lot of old guys dancing and, and getting with it, you know? Uh, <laughs> no, but I re <laughs> Uh, just, you know, in trying to get just a different demographic in there um, and just mixing it up. Yeah, so, kind of what I thought, yeah. yeah. Cool. So is the, has the cost been reduced this year? Because I haven't been out to the Widow of the Woods since it moved to Loudy. Well, once or twice. But yeah. So significantly. It's the, not walkable. Either. What? So it's $10 this year? Yeah, so uh, last year it was uh, $25 for seven bands, and then at the gate we increased it at 30 so it was pre-sale you could get tickets. Um, this year is significantly uh, reduced Friday nights free, um, some really good bands. And then this year as a planning, the Widow Planning uh, Committee um, decided as an event admission, $10 Saturday only. So all day uh, come and see the vendors uh, in, in or, get, or interact with um the different amenities and come to see the band that night. It's ten dollars, so I'll pay ten dollars to come and see Chris dance. Pretty, yeah. The old guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Twenty dollars for that. Never mind. I think I just found a fundraiser for the skate park. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, we need a few. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, and the fence does look good, and just walked that yesterday, and. Still a little problem, but not anywhere near what it was. Yeah, I think it. Yeah. And Trevor even patched the uh, cracks they old it too. Summer helped did that. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. Closing remarks. No. Motion to adjourn. Second. I got a motion to adjourn. Councilman Nichols, second by Councilman. Favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Meeting adjourned.